Cute. No, you didn't read any of the reviews. Yes, I did. I read every no, single one. No, you only read the legit ones. You did not read the independent bloggers, or you didn't read the comments section. I told you to stay out of that comment I know, section. But I couldn't help it, and now it's like they're my anxiety avatars. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten Broadway controversies and scandals of the century so far. Gentlemen, you intrigue me. For this list, we'll be looking at the most shocking offenses that have taken the Broadway world by storm over the past 22 years. If we missed any of your most contentious events, let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Beetlejuice vs. The Music Man River City isn't in any trouble. Then I'll have to create some. We got trouble! We got trouble! Right in River City! Right in River City! Don't make us choose. Beetlejuice was such a fun musical, and it's a real shame it was marred by controversy early in its run. I'm on the bench, but coach, just put me in the game. All you gotta do is say my name. But I don't know your name. Well, the show hit the big stage in April of 2019, but didn't get off to a hot start critically. But in this case, we don't even know if that would have mattered. The Music Man, starring literal movie star Hugh Jackman, was slated to open in the same theater just a bit later. In preparation for the new musical, Beetlejuice was forced to announce they would close in June of 2020. Sorry, everybody. Soon a new leading man will have his name on the marquee. Will he be as sexy as yours truly? Nah, not possible. Unfortunately for everyone, COVID-19 hit in March and Beetlejuice closed without a proper finish. The show was able to open again in 2022, but will close for good in 2023. We'll miss you most of all, shrunken head guy. Holy crap, does anybody know of any good therapists? Number 9. Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark I'm a 65 million dollar circus tragedy It's a rare occasion when we get a show that's a complete hot mess scandal all on its own. Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark was a monumental undertaking from the jump. We want to have the, the theater of it right in the laps of the audience. <laughs> You don't know until the last half second that he's going to be that close. The show, literally about a superhero who can swing from webs like a spider, featured technical stunts that were incredibly hard to nail down. And at Goblin and Green, we specialize in assisting clients who have sustained injuries while working at or attending the Broadway musical Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. Leading up to opening night, a long lead up that was delayed multiple times, Many actors were injured while doing the stunts. It hasn't even opened yet, but there has been another accident for the most expensive Broadway musical ever. A stuntman in Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark fell about 30 feet during a preview performance last night. After the show finally premiered, it received terrible reviews, causing producers to call the whole thing off and try again. When the show opened again, the reviews were better, but not by much. Don't think about tomorrow. We've only got today. Number 8. Hamilton and Slavery. I speak out against slavery. You could have done so much more if you only had time. Lin Manuel Miranda's Hamilton is no stranger to controversy. Sometimes it stands on the right side of things, like when the cast called out then Vice President elect Mike Pence during bows. But in this case, people had some rightly deserved criticism. Just ask Miranda himself. When Hamilton premiered to an audience past the Broadway stage with a pre-filmed release on Disney+, Plus, a lot of viewers took issue with the show's portrayal of slavery. A civics lesson from a slaver. Hey, neighbor, your debts are paid because you don't pay for labor. We plant seeds in the South. We create, you keep ranting. We know who's really doing the planting. The criticisms ranged from saying the show glorified slave owners throughout American history to saying it erased the era's horrors altogether. Black and white soldiers wonder alike if this really means freedom. Not yet. To Miranda's credit, he publicly welcomed criticism of his work. It just goes to show when more people see something, more points of view come to light. Washington is revered as father of our country, but our understanding of history goes awry when we only seek or, or care to listen to one part of a story. Number 7. Okeriete Onaudawan and Mandy Patinkin casting. You, you've originated roles before, a lot of them. This is not originating a role, this is a Josh Groban in the role. You know, I've never jumped into a moving train, yes. 
So it's like everyone's like, we've been doing this for a while. And I'm like, guys, this is like my, my preview. But nobody cares. Natasha, Pierre, and the Great Comet of 1812 was one of the most inventive shows of the 2016 season. Unfortunately, a casting controversy spurred this musical to close much before its time. The show initially starred Josh Groban as Pierre, but in July of 2017, black actor Okariete Onaudawan took over the lead role. Did you ever imagine you'd be playing an awkward accordion playing 19th century Russian on Broadway? I totally did. This was like <laughs> my dream ever since I was a kid. I was like, I want to play Pierre from, from War and Peace. <laughs> right, and now right. it's like happening. Onaudawan had a limited run, but fans were surprised when it was announced Broadway veteran Mandy Patinkin would be taking over the role three weeks before Onaudawan was initially supposed to leave. Fans worried, rightly, that the instance was another case of replacing a black actor with a white actor to try and increase ticket sales. Patinkin later announced he would withdraw from the show, and it ended up closing. It's, just, it's theater, and it comes and it goes. And uh, uh, thank you to every member of the company, cast on stage and crew backstage, past and present. Number six, Jagged Little Pill. Recommend sticking your foot in your mouth at any time. Feel free. When it was announced that a new musical based on Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill album would be hitting the Broadway stage, 90s kids rejoiced. But the show quickly became mired in controversy. I'm free, but I'm focused. I'm green, but I'm wise. I'm hard, but I'm friendly. Before Jagged Little Pill went to Broadway, one of the main characters, Joe, was clearly portrayed as non-binary. Then, when the show moved to the bigger stage, all references to the gender queerness of the character, including the use of they-them pronouns, were removed. And even though Joe was not written as a non-binary character, we as the creators of this musical embraced the fact that the role had a breadth of resonance for many. Um, but what we learned through our work with the Impact Board is language matters. The backlash of this trans and non-binary erasure was swift and strong. Fans still feel the sting of this one. And all I really want is some justice. Oh, Number five, Alice Ripley accusations. Really? What exactly do you know? For decades, Alice Ripley has been one of the most beloved and enduring figures in the musical theater community. Her starring role in Next to Normal especially helped shed light on the prevalent issue of mental health. So casual and hardcore fans alike were understandably devastated and angry when this next controversy came to light. In 2021, multiple fans accused Ripley of taking advantage of their connection to her, showering them with affection before pulling it away. These fans were often young and queer, calling into question Ripley's intentions and alleged manipulative tactics. Ripley has denied these allegations, but they won't soon be forgotten. Number four, justice for swings. What's amazing is that it was seven years since you last did this. Yeah. <laughs> and you were able to just like, boom, step right into it. I feel like I have like kind of a duty to the business. If there's one truth about musical theater, it's that swings and understudies are instrumental to the success of any show. The COVID-19 pandemic only made this truth more obvious, with swings taking over roles at the drop of a hat when someone tested positive. And then it was time to have a freak out. Can you blame me? I've made my Broadway debut with like two hours notice. It was like dusting off a really, really rusty piece of equipment. So it's baffling to us that someone in the community, much less the president of the Broadway League, would say something so inane. The pent up demand tells us that people want us to be back. In 2021, President Charlotte St. Martin blamed a slew of canceled performances on young swings and understudies who weren't as, quote, efficient in delivering the role. Understandably, St. Martin's comments drew considerable backlash from the Broadway community. The swings and understudies have not had a chance to learn. They watch from the corner of a room while we rehearse, while we get to practice over and over again. They just get to watch and write notes, and then five hours before a performance, it's all, you're on. Number three, funny girl drama. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. If there's one thing Rachel Berry's gonna do, it's play Fanny Bryce on Broadway. No matter the cost or the drama, 
But initially, Leah Michelle was not the casting choice for the famous musical's 2022 revival. By the way, you got that part and Leah Michelle started trending on <laughs> Twitter because everyone knew that she wanted the part. Instead, Beanie Feldstein of Lady Bird and Booksmart fame took on the role. It is the titular role! No! When the show opened, Feldstein's comedy chops were praised, but her singing voice apparently left much to be desired. Face the facts! You don't got it! You think beautiful girls are gonna stay in style forever? After a slew of criticism, Feldstein announced she would be leaving the show early, leaving the door wide open for Michelle. Who would have thought that Glee could predict the future? A silver flute, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. they'll cheer each toot. Hey, that kid is terrific. Number two, Scott Rudin. So I'm gonna give it to him. <laughs> Where is he? With so many terrible stories about Scott Rudin, it's a wonder his departure didn't happen sooner. But before a 2021 expose in The Hollywood Reporter, Rubin's alleged abusive behavior was just an open secret. The article mentioned multiple allegations of abuse towards his employees, including throwing things, other instances of physical harm, and hurting people's careers after they quit. After the article, Moulin Rouge star Karen Olivo announced they would leave because of Rudin's behavior. The silence about Scott Rudin? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. That's the easy one, y'all. <laughs> That's a monster. Later, Broadway superstar Sutton Foster threatened not to star in The Music Man if Rudin didn't step back. We're happy for this show of solidarity, but we wish it came sooner. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Bye Bye Patty. Oh, what a circus she's no longer a part of. The, the ticket price is outrageous. You know, there's, there's so many obstacles that prevent theater from being the tool it should be in our society, which is an education. Hades Town hearing impaired audience member, continuing the accessibility conversation on Broadway. The people who need to use these devices should feel comfortable and confident in seeing a Broadway show and not be met with shame and embarrassment and anxiety. Closed captioning technology for theaters has advanced in the last few years. Jesse Williams photos. Whoever leaked these nude photos, you're gross. The theater is a sacred space and everybody doesn't understand that. Everybody doesn't necessarily respect or regard that in the way that maybe they should or we'd like them to. West Side Story casting. Bernardo fired for sharing explicit photos without consent. The crowd outside the new revival of West Side Story on Broadway are not fans. They're protesting one of the musical's lead actors. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, fraudulent investors. As if on cue, Mark Hotton arrives to save the day, says Sprecher's friend and attorney, Ronald Russo. Mark Hotton appears to be a totally legitimate guy. Odds are you've never seen a production of Rebecca. In fact, we're willing to bet a lot of you haven't even heard of the much maligned musical, an adaptation of Daphne du Maurier's 1938 novel. There's a very good reason for that. Let me tell you, Favell, blackmail is not much of a profession. We know how to deal with it in our part of the world, strange as it may seem to you. The musical started in Vienna in 2006 and was slated to come to Broadway in the early 2010s. But you can't really bring a musical to New York City with fake investors. The mysterious death is just part of the wild script he's writing. You know, you think, oh gosh, maybe it is believable because it's so crazy. Nobody would dream up a story that nutty. That's right. A 2012 New York Times investigation revealed that four of the musical's quote-unquote investors had never existed. A man named Mark Houghton had made them up and made $60,000 in fees in the process. He was really a very dangerous guy. By the time we realized that's what he was doing, it was gone. Producers tried to bring the show to Broadway afterward, but lost the rights in 2017. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.